There are rich teams and there are poor teams. Then there's 50 feet of crap. And then there's us. We got to think differently. I actually had four jobs. I was working as a night watchman. I was working at flipping hamburgers. I was working at a convenience store. And I was doing a little bit of teaching. The only thing I knew anything about was baseball. So I started writing about baseball. You're discounting what scouts have done for 150 years. We're going to shake things up. Bill James started writing about the valuation of baseball players using regressions analysis. I spent a long time trying to predict how many runs a team would score. And given how many runs they scored, how many games they win. Seems impossibly simple now, but that was all it was. At the time, nobody else knew. Nobody was counting it. It was baseball hobbyists. And people who had quantitative ability, but had no connection to the game, who were generating all this new, essentially, baseball knowledge. If there's a runner on second, and no one out, and a ground ball is hit to the shortstop, the right play is to be aggressive and try to make it third. And I had written about it. And all of a sudden, I realized the Oakland A's were doing it. That was actually the first clue I had that these people may be paying attention to what we're doing. Bill James' way of analyzing baseball was finally beginning to take hold in the major leagues, led by a progressive front office in the East Bay that would soon take the American League by storm. The way out. And he was backed into a corner with his payroll. And he was just looking for a way to win. How are these guys going to survive when they have X amount of money and their competitors have 10 times that amount of money? What these guys decided was, we got to look for new knowledge. we got to question everything. They found great inefficiencies in the way they were valuing players. We were really trying to rob some of the things that were going on in Wall Street and trying to apply them because, you know, finding value is ultimately what you're trying, they were trying to do on Wall Street and we were trying to do in baseball. They found that defense was overvalued and offense was undervalued and guys that got on base in unspectacular ways, they could buy for a fraction of the cost. There's no such thing as being too stupid to be able to play, play baseball. It is the sport you can play with just minimum amount of mental activity. And and it attracts people who, who are qualified. And those people are not well equipped to run regressions analysis or to, or, or to think creatively about data uh, or, or to ask interesting questions about how you go about gathering data from a baseball field. So in order to do this thing that the Oakland was doing, you had to bring in a different kind of person, a person a lot like the kind of people who are in this audience and who had often had no experience in sports, but had a lot of experience with thinking about data. And, and the, the Paul D. Podesta, who was the second in command, Harvard graduate in charge of R&D, um, said in a funny way, that's exactly the point. He said for a player to become a member of the Oakland A's, he has to be defective in some way. There can't be any corporation in America, any industry, where the employees are as scrutinized as professional baseball players. Uh, they do what they do in front of millions of people, many of whom just assume they are experts in valuing baseball players. They have statistics, sometimes the wrong statistics, but nevertheless, statistics attached to every move they make on the baseball field. They've been doing basically the same thing for 100 years and more or less the same thing for 150 years. If that employee can be so badly misvalued, that you can build a juggernaut out of essentially the rejects of the profession, the defective parts, uh, then who can't be misvalued? And at that point, this story to me, and st it still is this, is a story that isn't so much a about sports or baseball. It's about markets. It's about how they work or don't work, especially when you're trying to value people. So when I got to the A's, I did what uh, I think is my, my favorite business practice and ultimately what I think is probably the most important one and that's I started to ask the naive question all over the organization. Now the naive question is this, if we weren't already doing it this way, is this the way we would start? If we weren't already doing it this way, is this the way we would start? And I started asking the naive question all over the A's organization in search of things as they were just because that's the way they had always been. Now it seems like a pretty simple test. In fact, Peter Drucker, you know, introduced this test, I think, you know, decades ago. And yet, 
our public and private institutions are, are replete with examples of things as they are just because that's the way they've always been. I mean, why is the workday nine to five? You know, why is there still an electoral college? You know, in baseball terms, why do people still believe that trying to bunt and steal bases helps to score runs? Well, these are just a, a number of examples of things that I came across, uh, you know, in, it, while I was asking the naive question. In fact, and that was absolutely true with the A's. I was walking down the street Concentrating on truck and right By the time I was 14 or 15, I had begun to realize that a lot of baseball's traditional wisdom didn't actually make sense. As for decades, managers used outdated formulas or intuition in making decisions. So night after night, he crunched numbers until he came up with new statistics based on facts that would either support or debunk tradition. Example, Fenway Park and its infamous left field wall, the Green Monster. Fenway was legendary as a right-handed hitter's park. But analysis showed it actually favored left-handed hitters. It's gone. Looking up at the wall, goodbye. Bill James is a very, very smart guy uh, who doesn't just understand information, but he's shown people a different way of interpreting that information. Major League Baseball was slow to appreciate him. When James claimed that legendary manager Sparky Anderson was more lucky than talented... Excuse me, what the hell's going on out here? Well, Nick's scared because his eyelids are jammed and his old man's here. We need a live, was it a live rooster? We need a live rooster to take the curse off Jose's glove and nobody seems to know what to get Millie or Jimmy for their wedding present. Is that about right? Okay, well, uh, candlesticks always make a nice gift and uh, maybe we can find out where she's registered, maybe a place setting or maybe a silverware pattern. Okay, let's get to it. Let's go. Sparky shot back that James was a fat little bearded man who knows nothing about nothing. 